Unless you've been living under a rock recently. You know what this little darling is. In fact, it's the thing that's turned the world upside down and has been wreaking havoc all over the world. Since the epidemic started in Wuhan, China, near the end of 2019, it has spread death and mayhem to every corner of the globe. The world has responded with varying degrees of mitigation, with varying degrees of success. In the United States, as in most regions of the world, we adopted the methods of mitigation originated in communist China, a totalitarian dictatorship that routinely subjugates its people. Accordingly, we adopted a strategy of totally locking down our people, forcing them into isolation, whether they were sick or not, and completely shutting down the economy. The shutting down of the economy has caused an economic downturn of a magnitude which has not been seen since the Great Depression of the 1930s. Most populated locations in the U.S. have suffered from the same fate in the past month. Federal, state, and local governments all jumped on the bandwagon and instituted very draconian methods to reduce the spread of the virus with the stated goal of protecting the public health. While these methods, such as forcing people to stay in their home, closing down all non-essential businesses, restricting travel, and enforcing social distancing, have served to slow the virus and flatten the curve, so to speak, it has exacted untold misery on its populace by completely crushing the economy. It causes one to question, was the cure worse than the disease? Instead of a targeted approach that would require standard quarantining of sick people and protections to the most vulnerable in the population, such as social distancing, the government has taken the blunt object of total shutdown and bludgeoned the economy into complete submission. The effect on business, both large and small, has been catastrophic. Businesses in lodging, travel, Manufacturing, restaurants, real estate, and many other industries across the board have been affected. And it's not just small business that's been dramatically affected. The airline companies have been devastated. It looks like both major airlines and Boeing, for example, will require bailouts from the government. In fact, every major industry has been affected and is requiring a government bailout. So let me ask you, is the government going to bail out the entire economy to compensate for what it did? As of the making of this video, over 22 million people have applied for unemployment. These numbers, on a percentage basis, rival the Great Depression. And in fact, Goldman Sachs estimated that unemployment may reach as high as 30% before all of this is over. Further, Ray Dalio, founder and co-chief investment officer of Bridgewater Associates, uh, the world's largest and most successful hedge fund, describes the current situation as similar to the period of 1930 to 1945, which of course was the period of the Great Depression. Both of these predictions from credible sources are sobering, to say the least. The federal government, in its typical ham-handed fashion, responded to the crisis by injecting over $2 trillion into the economy, all with borrowed money, immediately increasing the federal deficit from an estimated $1 trillion before the crisis to an estimated $3 trillion with a mere swipe of the pen. It's the least the government could do after completely destroying the economy with its shotgun approach to solving the problem. In addition to this enormous fiscal response, the federal government has taken unprecedented actions to shore up the financial markets, which went into a tailspin following the shutdown of the economy. The Fed, in a dramatic move, injected trillions of dollars printed out of thin air 
into the capital markets in the form of open market operations, where it began a program of purchasing not only treasury securities and mortgage-backed securities, as it had done many times in the past, it was now buying all forms of debt, including corporate debt, high yield or junk bonds, bonds backed by credit card receivables, auto receivables, and many, many other things. As a result, the Fed's balance sheet has ballooned from over $4 trillion, much of it accumulated during the previous financial crisis, to 6 to $7 trillion almost overnight. This is all done through money printing, which is basically increasing the money supply and devaluing the dollar. The future effect of all of this government intervention will be felt by the world for years to come with completely unpredictable consequences. But perhaps the most disturbing and questionable things about the government's response to the crisis is the dramatic and unprecedented infringement on individual rights afforded to citizens under the Constitution. What gives a state the right to tell its healthy citizens they can't do interstate travel to protect their property rights? They can't transact business. They can't worship in the manner that they please. And they can't even go to a park that's largely empty to take a walk or ride a bicycle. I predicted from the beginning that it was just a matter of time before the public would begin to rebel against this dramatic overreach of government power. Witness the recent protests in Michigan, Florida, Texas, North Carolina, California, and many, many other states. Civil disobedience, coordinated protests, and eventually riots in the street are natural consequences of a far-reaching government policy that robs people of individual rights and subjects them to governmental tyranny. Now don't get me wrong, an international pandemic needs drastic me measures to ensure that the virus doesn't spread unchecked throughout the population. The need for a coordinated response was never in question. The question I am raising here is, was the governmental response in the United States proportionate with the true health risk of the COVID-19 virus? We don't mean to denigrate the importance of saving every human life that could be saved in this pandemic. We are asking what path could have been taken that would have protected public health, stemmed the growth of the virus, and yet permitted the economy and the country to continue to operate even at a lower level until the virus was contained. Why wasn't it enough to quarantine individuals that were sick and put into place other precautions such as social distancing, masks, and reducing the number of social gatherings rather than shutting down the entire economy? Now the federal, state, and local governments are scrambling to address the economic destruction that its far-reaching policies have done to the economy. Panic has set in. Up to this point, the medical argument for mitigating the virus has won the argument. But all are now realizing that the cure went too far, and the radical medical solution that was followed did not adequately consider the economic devastation that would follow from a complete shutdown of the economy. Our elected officials, both in Washington and on a state level, now need to examine the facts away and separate from the emotions connected to the pandemic and associated loss of life. How do we get out of this mess? How do we responsibly get the economy working again? The answer to these questions can't be delayed for another month. We won't have an economy to go back to if we wait too long. The virus will eventually go away, but the economic damage in terms of business closures, jobs lost, and permanent changing to people's buying patterns will remain. The economic devastation that people are experiencing will not go away. And it doesn't matter how much money the government throws at it. Yes, we threw the baby out with the bathwater. We killed the goose that laid the golden egg. 
in our rush to save lives and quell an emerging pandemic that was caused by communist China, we inflicted irreparable damage on ourselves, the American dream, and our rights as citizens. The cure was indeed worse than the disease. I call on all governments, federal, state, and local to get the economy open again as quickly as possible. This can be done safely and sensibly. I call upon them to institute a tar targeted surgical approach that protects the most vulnerable and minimizes the chances of a resurgence of the virus. We need to do it now or we won't have an economy to go back to. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Hit the like button and smash the the bell if you got value out of this video and of course please subscribe to make sure that you receive all future videos a special note at the end of this video nothing in this video is intended to take away from the tireless efforts of doctors nurses first responders and other healthcare workers on the front lines that have worked around the clock to help us through this pandemic we are eternally grateful to you for all your efforts. You are the true heroes.